I'm Daron Abdullah, head coach and founder of the Scarberian Boxing Club in Toronto. And today I'm going to demonstrate the three main rhythms of boxing and how to use them to your advantage. Being Caribbean, my family from the island of Trinidad, I learned rhythm from a very young age, stemming from our music, our dancing, and steel pan drumming. I later came to realize that boxing too has a basic rhythm. And I learned this rhythm and how to consciously change the tempo of it to gain a competitive advantage over my opponents and sparring partners. So boxing rhythm can be broken down into three general categories. Number one, basic body rhythm. So this is a slight shift from left to right. As you can see, hips and shoulders following naturally. This movement facilitates fluidity of movement from offense to defense and vice versa. Your aim when practicing this should be perfect balance and coordination. From this basic rhythm, I could throw any one of the six punches of boxing. So there's the jab, cross, hook, rear hook, lead uppercut, rear uppercut. If I were to put them together, you'll see how I can throw them off this rhythm easily. When we're talking about defense, you should be able to perform most of your boxing defense from the simple, basic body rhythm. So while parrying, not necessarily to have a rhythm for it, it can be useful when it comes to counter punching. So you can parry, blocking, slipping, ducking, shoulder roll, Here's an example of how you can combine your offensive and defensive body rhythm together. The second rhythm is the pendulum. And this is to get up on the balls of your feet in a back and forth bouncy motion. And in this motion, you can gain ground on your opponent quickly, score blows, and quickly retreat to avoid his counterattack. What you don't want to do is exaggerate the footwork. Don't do that, that's too much movement. You're gonna tire out, you're gonna burn out. Keep it very simple and relaxed. Okay, don't overdo it. So I'm gonna share a secret with you. This rhythm works best against flat-footed fighters. The reason is because flat-footed fighters have a very difficult time timing the person in front of them who's in the pendulum. And generally speaking, the one in the pendulum can get off his shot a lot faster. And if the person is flat-footed and they have too wide of a stance, they're basically letting you know that they're giving up their mobility in order to throw some counter punches or, or just cover up or whatever. But keep in mind, it does require a lot of leg stamina. So you better be doing your road work. And I always tell my guys in the gym, picture two cowboy fighters, two gunslingers. Generally speaking, the one in the pendulum is quicker to get his shots off. So one final point to mention about the basic body rhythm and the pendulum is don't mix them up. They don't work together. So for example, you're not gonna do this. Either you're in the pendulum, keeping your torso upright, or you're in the basic body rhythm, turning your shoulders and your hips. They don't go together. First of all, as you can see, it looks pretty damn ridiculous. Number two, you're using too much energy. And number three, you're not gonna be effective combining two rhythms. However, you can transition between these two rhythms in order to keep your opponent off balance and to surprise them and to be more effective in your boxing strategy. So for example,
The last rhythm is punching rhythms. Smart and experienced fighters change the rhythm of their punching in order to confuse their opponents while conserving energy. They do this by not throwing every single punch with full intensity and force. Instead, they will mix up arm punches, which is basically minimal or no rotation of the hips and shoulders. They'll mix those up with power shocks, which is full rotation of the hips and shoulders. For example, you could throw a basic one, two arm punch to get your opponent to raise their guard and expose their midsection. And then you could step in and throw a full rotation crushing liver shot to the body. Beginner boxers have a tendency to throw every single punch with full intensity and power. The problem with that is when you get into the ring, you're not gonna last too long. It requires too much energy and you become very predictable. A smarter, a more experienced opponent or sparring partner will definitely catch on to your pattern and they will know what to expect and how to maneuver before and after they engage with you. So here's an example of how to mix up arm punches with power shots. I know I said there were only three main rhythms, but there's one more I purposely kept back and it's muy importante and it ties directly into all the other rhythms and it's breathing rhythms. You have to learn how to coordinate your breathing with your movements. If your movements, offensive or defensive, are fast and explosive, then your breathing needs to match that. And you should be breathing through tiny bursts out the mouth with your jaw closed. For example, if you're not throwing punches or engaging with your opponent or sparring partner, then you should be breathing only through the nose with your mouth closed for several reasons. Breathing through your nose with your mouth closed reduces the risk of getting your jaw broken in boxing. Mouth breathing activates your upper chest and faster heart rate and is associated with the panic or stress response, i.e. your sympathetic nervous system. Think about it. Do you want to feel stressed out before or during your match? Of course not. By consciously slowing down your breathing through your nose, you can exhale through your mouth closed jaw. You take more oxygen into your lungs as you engage the use of the diaphragm, which is located just below your rib cage. This in turn automatically puts you back into a state of calm and relaxation, i.e. parasympathetic nervous system. Militaries and special operatives around the world are taught tactical breathing. This is a specific rhythm of breathing that is designed to put them in a parasympathetic state during high stress situations. There are variations of patterns, but here's the one that I like to use. It's the 4462. Look, I want you to try this right now wherever you are. So you're gonna inhale through the nose for four seconds. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Exhale through their mouth slowly. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold for two seconds and repeat. You can use this tactical breathing pattern in any situation where you're feeling stress, whether it's at work or at home, preparing for an exam, stopped at a red light in traffic, you can use this. Do it over and over and over and over again, and I guarantee you're gonna feel calm and relaxed. It's not magic, it's pure physiology. If you like this video, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and even share it with your friends. And remember, train hard, believe in yourself, and stay blessed.